Hello again from New York. It's my pleasure to uh, be uh, talking to you regarding a very special, although rare, condition of transcatheter revive replacement. Zero contrast media TAVR. And let's see how this may work in our practice. First of all, why do we need to do that? Why do we why do we even need to know that? Practically, interprocedure supervivular orthography with ID and contrast is a crucial procedural step that governs the technical success of TAVR procedure. No question about that. At the same time, in rare occasions, we may be between a rock and a hard place due to severe renal dysfunction and the risk of post-procedure, kidney injury due to the procedure itself, due to the contrast and associated with the contrast media uh, required. So knowing how to perform a zero contrast tablet transfemoral with T guidance and general anesthesia, we need that skill in my view. First of all, we start by a meticulous planning of the procedure. We must have a limited contra CTA in order to do our measurements uh, way before the procedure and have a very good planning as well as a very detailed consent process. You can see the simulation of implant of a self-expanding valve in our patient and how this might fit very nicely in the projected anatomy. And then we have to be very clear and very secure about a high quality access that will otherwise preclude the need, the utilization of contrast during the procedure and would allow ultrasound um, a facilitated access, ultrasound guided perhaps access at the, I should say, um, at the common femoral artery and which place that would be. In this uh, situation that you see here, the minimal contrast TAVR, the minimal contrast CTA was performed long before the TAVR. And I think that the sizes and the absence, generalized absence of calculation in the areas that calculated was actually a good thing. Then we have to plan the procedure to be performed at the general anesthesia and TE because we need the patient absolutely non-mobile in critical parts of the procedure that I will detail right after. TE imaging has to also be of great quality because obviously we're not going to have any contrast injections in the aortic root. The most critical step is to place and align three pigtail catheters, one per cusp. All right, you can achieve that through the same large, large bore axis, uh, two pigtails and one in the alternative axis, or uh, you can have another a third arterial axis, maybe a small four French size, in order to just perform this step. So you could use both two femorals and one radial for this uh, type of approach, uh, or you can, uh, uh, in the expense of some bleeding, of course, you can put two pigtails in uh, through the large valve seal. Regardless, that's besides the point. Once we align them, then it's very clear we have to move the camera, the II, I should say, an image intensifier around. So a single plane may be touching the bottoms of all three pigtails. And as we know from basic Euclidean geometry, uh, three points define a specific and only one plane, one level. From then on, we lock the magnification. We don't change the magnification. These are steps that are very important. And, and you freeze the II position. You don't change the angulation of the image intensifier. And also you lock the level of the table. It is fine to move the table north-south in order, let's say, to image the, the valve that goes up through the femorals, but uh, you should not move the table up or down. Why? Because we want to recreate this exact view with this exact magnification at the time of the implant. 
And if the magnification changes or the image intensifier changes and all that, then we're not going to have this image. And why? why? Why is that? It was for the obvious reasons that during the implantation, we would need to remove two of the three big tails. But if we know where the level is, we only need one pigtail from that one to define that level of the annulus. As you can see here, the valve was implanted with one pigtail on the side, ultimately verified through TEE. And the final result with the TEE, you can see an implant depth of maybe a few millimeters, but not really excessive at all and great results by the TEE imaging. Thank you so much for your attention, and I hope I was very uh, clear in the step-by-step -step explanation of zero contrast TAVR. I hope to see you for this and other complex cases in Sky Scientific Sessions 2024 in Long Beach, California, right off the Los Angeles International Airport. Congratulations for GIS 2023.